بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد so inshallah ta'ala um first and foremost we would like to uh welcome all of you our visitors um from wherever you have come from to Woodlawn Baltimore County uh and the surrounding areas for uh this seminar that is taking place over the course of uh the next two days today and tomorrow centered around the methodology of the people of hadith um my speech with you on this evening and likewise tomorrow is going to be centered around the principles of the salafi methodology and no doubt this is an affair which is extremely important us as people of hadith and people of sunnah we are a principled people we are people who our methodology has principles that are connected to it. And oftentimes you find many of the people who speak regarding uh, this reality, and we have principles that we live by, the likes of this, but you ask them what those principles are, they have no clue. They have no clue. So we're going to, inshallah ta'ala, um, read something from the works of a Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri, alayhi rahmatullah, from his book entitled Imdad as Salafi or Aiding or Supporting the Salafi by way of guidelines and principles connected to the methodology of the Salaf. And as you obey, he uh, breaks down these principles in a way uh, that is clear and easy to understand. So we're going to mention them uh, over the course of two talks, Bidhi Ta'ala, one by one. He mentions about six or seven principles and tonight we're going to take four of them we're going to take four of the principles mentioned by Ashir Ubaid al-Jabri this book alhamdulillah it's been translated and published by our brothers from Miroth publications and so we're going to go right into the principles inshallah ta'ala the first principle that is mentioned um, and this is after he uh, mentioned some introductory speech leading into the principles al-qa'idah to al-ula the first principle. The first principle is in relation to Al Intisab Ila Salafiya. Al Intisab Ila Salafiya. Or ascription to Salafiya. To ascribe oneself to a Salafiya. The Shaykh mentions for Inna Kathiran Mimman Yadda'una Anna Hum Ahla Sunna wal Jama'a. He said that many of those who claim that they are Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah wa annahum ala al huda and that they are upon guidance yashma'zuna min al intisab ila salafiyya they somewhat shy away from ascribing themselves to salafiyya they don't like that word salafi aren't we just Muslim? didn't Allah just make us Muslims in the likes of this they shy away and they find fault with uh, this term salafiyya or uh, its ascription or ascribing oneself to it he says, He says, and in order that, in order that their hearts can find ease with this ascription and their resolve can be firm. He says, because what you'll find in the hearts of these people from this ishmizaz, this yani this shying away from and aversion to uh, ascribing to Salafiyyah, in reality is it, it is nothing but satanic whispers. It is nothing but satanic whispers. And what attributes uh, what contributes to that is da'f al azima wa qillat al fiqh fi deen is them having weakness in their resolve. And having a scanty amount of understanding of the religion. If their resolve was strong the, and they had fiqh and understanding of the religion, they will not shy away from that. They will not shy away from that. And they will not find within their souls any aversion to 
uh, ascribing to the methodology of the Salaf. So we say, meaning in order to bring the people ease and uh, contentment within their heart regarding this ascription, firstly, uh, there has come from a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that which indicates this, that which indicates this ascription. وَمِنْ ذَلِكُمْ قَوْلُوا النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لِفَاتِمَةً From that is the statement which he made to his daughter Fatima for ni'ma salaf ana lak That I am the best salaf for you I am the best salaf for you Firstly, this ascription It is not something which is new This ascription, it is not something which is new Rather, it is some, something which Yani it is an attachment to the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are who? They are the Salaf. They are the Salaf. And we can add to that, that at one point in time, you find that this was really the reality where people just hated that word Salafi. In this day and time, the new fitna is that everybody claims to be it. Everybody claims to be it even though they are distant from the reality of Salafiyya. Now, but we say, as the old adage goes, the proof is where it's in the pudding. It's not about what you claim. It's not about what you claim. Kullun yada'i waslan bi layla. Everybody claims an attachment to Layla. But Layla doesn't affirm that for any of them. So it's about the reality and not just mere claims. Now, and so... The Sahaba, the Messenger of Allah, alayhi wasalam, they were the Salaf, a kalimatu Salaf, and this word Salaf, it was something which was utilized by the Imams of this religion. And Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we are hadha wa and what increases this in clarity is the Ijma' and the consensus, ala sihat al intisab ila Salafiyyah, the Ijma' and the consensus upon. The correctness of ascription and ascribing to Salafiyya. We have the statement, the well known statement of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, in which he mentioned, La ayba ala man adhara madhab al Salaf. There is no ayb, there's nothing wrong with, there's no fault to be found with the one who uh, outwardly displays and manifests the methodology of the Salaf, when tasaba ilay, and attaches himself to it. And ascribes himself to it. And is honored by way of that. Bel yajib minhu Rather it is obligatory to accept that from him. By way of consensus. We must accept that from him. If he attaches and ascribes himself to it. For the methodology of the salaf. Is nothing except the truth. It is nothing except the truth. Shabbatis says, "For how alab woman min alam min hajina." This is a, a a noble and eminent scholar from the scholars of our methodology, and the ulama all attest to his nobility and his status, and the fact that he, he uh, is amongst the foremost scholars of Al Islam, transmitting what consensus, transmitting consensus. He likewise mentioned, Shaykh al-Islam meaning, he likewise mentioned, as has come within Fatawa al-Hamawiyah, page 34, he said, أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ فِي الْأَقْلِ الصَّرِيحِ وَلَا فِي شَيْءٍ مِنَ النَّقْلِ الصَّحِيحِ مَا يُوجُ مُخَالَفَ الْتَرِيقَ السَّلَفِيَةِ أَصْلَى He said, alayhi rahmatullah, and know that there is nothing within sound intellect nor anything within the authentic transmissions that would necessitate opposition to the methodology of the salaf no also whatsoever so we see ibad Allah by way of these words from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah that it is not ascribing to salafiyya that is new or that the ulama ever had an issue with but rather the new thing that which is an innovation and a deviation is to find fault with it that's the new thing. Now, Adhahabi. And Adhahabi died in what year? He died in the year 748 after the Hijrah. This is an important point. It's an important point because many of the people, they say, oh, well, this Salafiyah thing is new. 
right? This is something that started in the 90s and the likes of that. Imam Adhahabi, he died 748 after the Hijrah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa He mentioned in the book, Si Alam al Nubala, volume 16, page 475, when mentioning the biography of ad dar Qutni, the great Imam Hadith ad dar Qutni. He said when mentioning his biography, that it has been authentically reported from Adar Qutni that he said, that he said, Ma shay abghad ilayya min iml kalam. There's nothing more detestable to me than theological rhetoric. And this statement was heard by Abu Abdul Rahman as Silmi. Adahabi, he said thereafter, after citing the statement, along with who he heard it from. Quotes, I say, meaning Adahabi says, Lam yankhuli al-rajal abadan fi ilm al-kalam wal al-jidal that this man, Adar al-Qutni, he never entered into theological rhetoric, nor argumentation, nor did he delve into that, bal kana salafi, and rather he was salafi. Rather he was salafi. So here we have Adahabi all these years ago, all these years ago, referring to a Darakutni as what? Salafi. He was Salafi. So again, yani the ulama of past and present have never found fault with yani, one attaching and ascribing himself to the methodology of the Salaf. Now, so where do the people come from with this, yani, uh, why are you calling yourself Salafi? Why are you calling yourself by these terms? And didn't Allah just make us Muslim and the likes of that? These uh, types of statements and arguments that we've heard time and time and time and time again. On the contrast, you find people who refer to the Salafis with all types of derogatory terms. Now, amongst the terms you hear is what? Wahhabi. They are Wahhabis. Those Wahhabis and the likes of this. As Sheikh Taqiyya Adina Hilali, he mentioned, Concerning his term, Wahhabi. He said, alayhi rahmatullah, that there is not a group on the face of the earth. There is not a group on the face of the earth that refers to itself as Wahhabis. It doesn't exist. He says that, however, the innovators and the polytheists have coined this term and applied it to all of those who single out Allah in Tawheed and follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and avoid innovations and newly invented matters. Just as the polytheists refer to the Messenger of Allah as Mudhammam. They refer to him as Mudhammam, meaning the reprehensible one. Rather, the polytheists of old were more intelligent than these latter day people. For they used to refer to the Prophet وسلم, with a term that indicates criticism in their language. What does he mean? That at least the polytheists of old had enough sense when they wanted to insult somebody. To use a term that was actually insulting in their language. But these latter day people who want to insult the Salafis, they utilize a term that is not really insulting anyway. They call them Wahhabis. And he had attachment and ascription to uh, Shaykh Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. But the polytheists of old were more intelligent than these people. He says, while they were in fact blameworthy, and the Prophet alayhi salam, is pure and upright, and no statement of censor is applicable to him. Likewise are his followers unto the day of recompense, the Muslim monotheists. That which the enemies say about them cannot harm them. Now, so this first qaida is in relation to ascription to Salafia. Ascription to Salafia. al qaida to Athaniyah, the second principle. Mentioned by Sheikh Al Alam Ubaid Al Jabri, alayhi rahmatullah, yu'raf al rijal bil haqi wala yu'raf al haq bil rijal. That men are known by the truth, but the truth is not known by men. This is the principle from the principles of Salafiyya. That men are known by way of the truth, and the truth is not known by way of men. وَمَعْنَى هَذِهِ الْقَاعِدَةِ The meaning of this qa'idah, Shaykh Ubayi says, أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ يُوصَفْ بِالْتَمَسُّكِ وَأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَحْلِ السُنَّةِ وَأَنَّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الَّذِي 
لم تشبه شابئة أو شائبة البدعة والخرافة is that you have a person who may be described by way of steadfastness upon the religion and that he is from Ahl Sunnah and that he is upon the Haq which is not sullied by bid'a nor khurafa or superstitious beliefs and the likes of that with for alama to adalla to alay then this description that you've given him we are able to uh, 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 say that the reality of that or the indication of that is that which emanates from his statements and his actions this is the first affair this, or this is the first half of that statement meaning that we look at the statements of the people we look at his actions whoever you are describing as being from Ahl Sunnah that he's upon the Haq he is upright he is a person of Sunnah and the likes of this we're going to examine his statements, examine his actions. If his statements, his actions correspond with the haq, nah, then we're going to accept that statement regarding him. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you claim. It doesn't matter what he claims, even if he, if he says that he's upon the haq. We're going to look at the reality of his statements and his actions. Nah? And the second half of the statement, وَلَا يُعْرَفَ الْحَقْ بِالرِّجَالِ The ma'na is, أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ مُجَرَّ سُلُوكَ الرَّجُلُ فِي قَوْلٍ أو فعلٍ That the mere manner in which a person speaks. Now, the mere actions that he does. This is not enough for us to determine that he's upon the haq. Meaning that a person may have an eloquent speech, uh, an eloquent speaking style. Maybe he does action and the action look like they're, you know, okay actions, right? He travels around and he speaks here and he speaks there. He must be on the hawk because he's speaking everywhere. Or he's on YouTube. Or he must be on the hawk because of it or, or because of that. Or he's speaking, so therefore we're going to accept his speech. No. He says this doesn't mean that he is musib, that he's upon what is correct. But al hukum ala al aqwal wa a'mal in the salafiyya. Or in the Salafiyin, Mizanan Fakat. Rather, that by way, way of which we're going to judge his statements and determine if he's truly upon the Haq. We're going to judge his actions and determine if he is truly upon the Haq. We have two scales by way of which we're going to measure his statements. And they are An Nas Wal Ijma. The Nas, the text, Kitab, Sunnah Ala Fahm Salaf, and the Ijma, and the consensus of what Ahl Sunnah are upon. This is the scale by way of which we judge the statements and actions of the people. It's not by way of their claims or by way of what so-and-so says about him. I think he's a good brother, so therefore he must be. No, nah, this is not enough to determine whether or not he's upon the haq. Rather, we're going to take the haq, kitab, sunnah ala fahma salaf, the ijma, and examine his statements and actions in light of that. In light of that. No. Nah. القاعدة القاعدة الثالثة The third principle is in relation to الحب والبغض and this is uh, somewhat connected to uh, the second principle. It's in relation to loving and hating. الولاء والبراء you can say. الولاء والبراء نعم love and hatred فإن كثيرا he says, many of those who claim to be callers to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you find them transgressing the set limit of Allah Ta'ala in the issue of al hub wal of love and hatred. So therefore, the crux of the of the matter, that which we base our love and hatred upon. Uh, yani, or many of the people base their love and hatred upon, you find it to be al people, individuals. Individuals. Nah. The Shaykh he says that, fi dawat al in individuals themselves. He says that the people of, of Haq, they are united upon the fact that there is no human being 
that we love only for the sake of who he is, other than the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there is no one whom we love for the sake of who they are as, a, as an individual, as a person, other than the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is because he has conveyed the message of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And he is infallible in that which he conveys from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And he clarified that with a clear clarification. He did not increase upon that which he was commanded with, nor did he decrease from that. وَكَذَلِكَ سَائِرُ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَيْهِمْ جَمِيعًا الصَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ And similarly, all of the other uh, prophets and messengers, they were the same in that. Upon them all be prayers and peace. As for within the sunnah, meaning as for with Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, then that which we base our love and our hatred upon, it is not for the sake of individuals. It is not for the sake of people, such that our love and our hatred is based upon our love and hatred for this person. So, so once you go against this person, then we're against you now. La. So that if, if he goes left, you go left with him. If he deviates, then you what? You deviate along with him. Now, it's not based upon ashkhas. Ba'al huwa fillah. Rather, it's for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. It is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَقَدْ صَحَّتْ الأخبار بأن الحب في الله والبغض في الله والموالة في الله والمعادة في الله والمنع لله والإعطاء لله هذه ست صفات من استكملها It has come within the authentic sunnah of our, of our Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام that love for the sake of Allah Ta'ala hatred for the sake of Allah Ta'ala association and allegiance for the sake of Allah تبارك وتعالى Disassociation from others for the sake of Allah Ta'ala Withholding for the sake of Allah And giving for the sake of Allah These six characteristics Whoever completes them And his mu'amalat And his methodology For others He will have uh, He will have completed His iman Al-Qa'idah to al rabiyah And we're going to stop after this fourth Qa'idah uh, inshallah ta'ala And we will complete tomorrow bi Allah ta'ala This principle Thurrad ala al-mukhalif Thurrad ala al-mukhalif It is connected to the issue of uh, Rebutting and refuting One who has opposed what is correct The principle of rebutting and refuting The one that has opposed what is correct Shabayri says, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Many of the people, they take lightly this affair of rebutting and, and, and refuting the one that is opposed what is correct. And they see it to be something which causes division and splitting within the ummah. Because as they claim, the ummah is in need of this uniting for the sake of uniting. So we say, firstly, he says, هذا الاجتماع الذي تواسسون له بما تواسسون That this ijma that you claim, and you, 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 you stipulate principles, whatever you stipulate for it. And you call to it with various types of phrases and statements. He says, that Is that unity for the sake of Allah Ta'ala? Or is it just for the sake of numbers? They call to it all types of phrases like that which you find from the Ikhwan and Muflisin, that which they call that Qaida, Azahabiya, the golden principle which they say nothing will unite the Ummah except that innovative principle which they bring. And what is it? We're going to unite based upon what we agree upon and pardon and overlook that which we disagree upon. Even if a person curses the Sahab, even if a person accuses the mother, mothers of the believers of Loot and despicable action, it doesn't matter. We're going to unite based upon what we agree upon, and those things like that we're going to pardon and overlook. Now, with all these types of phrases that the people come up with, trying to unite the people around them, is this unity for the sake of Allah Ta'ala? Am fidati al ashkhas? Or is it for the sake of people? Or is it for the sake of, of people? He says, and can I feed that al ashkhas? If this unity is for the sake of people, we just want to put bodies in a room. We just want to come together for the sake of coming together. 
The Shaykh says, for hadha la haja bina ilayhi. We have no need for this. We have no need for this type of unity. If it's going to be based upon that. Now, when kana fi Allah, but if it is for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, then what are the other principles and what are the guidelines that will bring about that unity? So this particular affair of Rad ala mukhalif, it has to be understood properly. And it's, it's what you'll find many of the people uh, deviating as it relates to this issue. This one issue, not the, one of the, probably the most recent fitna that we had, uh, it was a result of not understanding this principle correctly. Shah Abayd, he explains it in another one of his work, Is'af bi ilah mawqif al haq. He mentions how we understand this principle of Rad ala mukhalif, that you have to look at it from another, a number of angles. One is the angle of the mukhalifa itself, the, the mistake that was made. The mistake that was made. The, the other angle is al mukhalif. From the, the person who made the mistake. From the standpoint of the person who made the mistake. He says, al mukhalif." As for the person who made the error. A person makes a mistake or an error. He says, Then this person, according to Ahl Sunnah, according to the Salaf, is going to be one of two men. He's going to be one of two men. Now, Al-Awwa, the first man. رَجُلٌ هُوَ عَلَى خَيْرٌ وَعَلَى سُنَّةٌ وَعَلَى هُدَى A man who is upon goodness, he's upon the sunnah, he's upon guidance. لَكِنْ أَخْطَأَ فِي أَمْرٍ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ But he erred in, a, in an affair amongst the affairs. A person, his asal is that he's salafi, a person of sunnah, but he makes a mistake. He errs in an issue, whether it is an issue of menhaj, issue of fiqh, whatever the issue may be. Naam, he makes, he makes a mistake. A Salafi, known Salafi, makes a mistake. Naam, he says, <laughs> This person, they, you're going to rebut, or his error is going to be rebutted. That mistake that he made, you're going to rebut the mistake. You're going to reject the mistake and object to it. We're not going to, going to accept something that is clearly wrong, even if it comes from, some, from, from a person that we love. It's clearly wrong, you're going to rebut the error. The error has to be checked. It has to be refuted. Now, he says, He says that they're not going to accept the error from him. But they preserve his honor. But they preserve his honor. Person is Salafi. Makes a mistake. Rebut the mistake. Because we're not going to accept any mistake from anybody. But preserve his honor. He's Salafi. He says the second person, the second person, whom Ahl al Huda, excuse me, Ahl al Hawa, min al Mubtadi'a al Dalal. They are the people of desires. People of desires from the, from the deviant innovators. This person makes the same mistake. How do you deal with that person now? You're going to deal with him differently from how you deal with the Salafi. And you're not going to treat the Salafi as though he's an innovator, nor do you treat the innovator as though he's a Salafi. Everything has to be put in its proper perspective, right? So this person, فَنَّ أَحْلَ سُنَّةَ يَقِفُونَ مِنْهُمْ أَحْلَ سُنَّةَ Deal with him like this. أَوَّلًا بِرَدِّ بِرَدِّ بِشِدَّةَ They're going to rebut his innovation with shidda, with sternness. They're going to rebut his innovation with sternness. ثانياً Secondly, إِذَا كَانَ تَلِيَ أَحْلَ سُنَّةَ أَسَوْلَ وَالْجَوْلَ وَرَجْحَانَ الْكِفَّةَ وَالْقُوَّةَ if Ahl Sunnah has influence, Ahl Sunnah, yani the, the influence and the dominance is with them, he says, إِنَّهُمْ يُشَدِّدُونَ عَلَى مُبْتَدِعَ النَّكِيرِ Then they are stern and harsh in repudiation of the innovators. And they're going to bring out against them every weapon which they have. They're going to wipe the floor with them, destroy them completely. He says that, now, and they're going to bring out everything they have against them. He mentions from horses and, and, and men, putting them down and debasing and lowering them, and humiliating them and debasing them. And why is this? Why are we dealing with them like this? Why? It's not a trick question, huh? You make them unpopular, you chase the people away from them. Right, you chase the people away from them so the people won't follow their, their way. 
And they're going to know uh, by way of how this individual is being dealt with, what this individual is upon, and the detriment and the evil of what they are falling into. Now, so that the people can be aware of them and they can avoid them. If the influence is with the innovators, they, perhaps they have power, they have a position and the likes of this, he says, and the authorities with them and in their hands. The Ahl Sunnah at that point suffices with rebutting and refuting the innovation itself. Alright, they will suffice with refuting the innovation itself. Now, and they are never going to suffice with, or they're never going to be pleased and okay with the innovation. And we have clear, irrefutable evidences indicating, indicating this methodology. He says, and it will suffice with maybe one or two of the proofs which he brings, inshallah ta'ala, because it's almost time for the salah. Now, he mentions firstly the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala who Allah the anzala alayk al kitab minhu ayatun muhkamatun hunna um al kitab wa ukhra mutashabihat hatta balagh wa ma yadhakkaru illa ul al albab He mentions the statement of Allah wa Ta'ala and he is the one who has sent down upon you Muhammad the book from it there are ayat muhkamat they are clear and decisive verses they are the foundations of the book and others they are mutashabihat up until he reached the end of the verse when he mentions and uh, none will take heed except the people of sound intellect. Within this uh, verse though, from the part which the shaykh he left out, is the statement of Allah wa uh, and uh, uh, as it relates to those individuals who have a disease of zayg in their heart or they have zayg and a disease in their heart and they pursue and chase after that which is mutashabihat, seeking and he, it's hidden interpretation and seeking fitna. But the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam, he said, here we have Rad ala mukhalif from the Messenger of Allah Muhammad alayhi wa sallam himself. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ أَلَا ذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَا مِنْهُ إِبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ التَّأْوِيلِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ سَمَّ اللَّهِ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ He said, alayhi wa sallatu sallam, that when you find those individuals who pursue that which is unclear and, and, and ambiguous from it, seeking fitna and seeking some hidden interpretations or meanings, they are those whom Allah Ta'ala is speaking about. So beware of them. So beware of them. Now, likewise, he brings that which comes in the introduction of Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abu Huraira. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqab sayakunu sayakunu في آخر أمتي أناس يحدثونكم ما لم تسمعوا أنتم ولا آباءكم فإياكم وإياهم. That he said عليه السلام that there's going to be at the end of my ummah people who they narrate to you and they speak to you regarding that which you have never heard of nor your fathers. So therefore you beware of them and they are to beware as well. This is, yani, as it relates to the, the, this principle of al-rad ala mukhalif. And this is, as we said, many of the people, they err in this issue. So you find them not understanding it properly. And thus, they treat the Salafi as though he's an innovator. And they treat the innovator as though he's Salafi. So if the Salafi makes a mistake, whether it is a perceived mistake or an actual mistake, then you find them dealing with that Salafi and the mistake of that Salafi as though he's... He's nothing. Name calling them and the likes of this, bringing all types of uh, ill statements against them and the likes of that. Now, so this principle has to be understood properly. Has to be understood properly. We're going to stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and pick up uh, from principle uh, five and six tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala knows best. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik. Ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.